Well, I hope and pray that you're having a good day. Uh, this is, I believe, week seven of our um, lockdown. Um, this is uh, this is getting old, like just between you and me. Uh, this is really getting old. Um, I had an opportunity uh, today, by the way, today is Saturday, uh, the 2nd, I believe, of May. And um, uh, we had our neighbor to neighbor today, and we, we did okay. Uh, got there early, got rid of the uh, food fairly quickly, and got um, uh, a lot of people served uh, quite uh, fast. We had about, I, I think, we gave enough groceries for about um, 280 or more people. Um, and uh, we were just blessed to be able to do that. Uh, we're studying the book of James in this class, and um, it is, uh, as we've talked about before, it is one of the uh, Bible passages or Bible books that uh, is extremely practical. It's, it's one of those books that, that you, you can't put down. Uh, it's one of those books where uh, we, uh, it only takes 11 minutes to read the book, at least for me. Um, I suspect that you're probably a uh, better reader than I am, and um, probably do it a whole lot faster. Uh, today we're discussing probably one of the um, most controversial uh, passages in uh, the book of James, uh, at least by those who uh, have a problem with uh, the subject or the term works, and we'll be talking about that uh, quite in depth uh, today. I hope and pray that uh, your study of the book of James has been uh, enlightening, that you are drawing closer to God because of this book. That's what all of God's books are designed for. Um, Paul says uh, in the book of Romans that the things that are written beforehand, 1 Corinthians rather, were written for our instructions. Um, you know something? I know that Bible passage like I know my own name. So why don't I just read it out of the book of Romans uh, for whatever was written uh, in earlier times was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. That's drawing closer to God. Um, and that is Romans uh, 15, 4, by the way. Sometimes things come and go in my mind and I forget where I was. Uh, but the book of James chapter 2 um, verses 14 through 26. Let's, let's go ahead and read that passage uh, very quickly. Um, James says, starting in verse 14, What use is it, my brethren, if a man says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed, and be filled. And yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body. What use is that? Even so, if it has no works, is dead. Excuse me. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was working with his works, and as a result of the works, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, and Abraham believed God and was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messenger and sent them out by another way. For just as a body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. So you see, this passage seems to be moving towards 
the concept that if you believe it, that is, you believe God, you believe his word, you'll do it. And, and that's, that's just about as simple as the Bible gets, isn't it? God said it, we do it. That is faith. Uh, unlike the uh, Calvinistic teachings that we have still lingering today, uh, nearly 400 years later, uh, is that um, uh, some believe that the very, the very second, the very split second that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're saved. They say no works involved. You have to do absolutely nothing. And yet what I read uh, in the book of um, uh, Mark, chapter 3, verse 11, is an interesting passage. Listen to this. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. The demons, the, the evil spirits, they believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That was not a question in their world. And yet, James gives the idea here that um, uh, do you think that they are saved because they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Does it take not only believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but doing something about it? We have to. The, 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 the connection with faith and works is, is all the way through our Bible. Listen to some of these Bible passages. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now look at the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 8. The same is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. Romans chapter 2, verse 26. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, excuse me, that was Revelation 2, 26. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give you authority over the nation. See how Jesus puts together that this, this, this idea of just believing. Instead, he doesn't say who believes he says, but who is involved in doing my works, Jesus says. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3, Paul says, Remember before our God and Father your good works of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his callings and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. You see, work, excuse me, faith works. Faith doesn't just sit back and say, yeah, I believe and expect all of the benefits of salvation and eternity simply because that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There was a Baptist preacher by the name of Sam Morris. I believe, I'll have to check on this, but I believe I got this uh, a quote uh, from Wayne Jackson. Either it was Fortify Your Faith, uh, Great Websites, and Christian Courier. One of those, I believe this is where I got this quote, and it just has stuck with me for a long time. But listen to what this preacher said about the involvement of works or anything in a person's salvation. He said he is a pastor of the First Baptist Church in Stamford, Texas. He said this, We take the position that a Christian's sins do not damn his soul. The way a Christian lives, what he says, his character, his conduct, or his attitude towards other people have nothing whatever to do with the salvation of his soul. All the prayers a man may pray, all the Bibles he may read, all the churches he may belong to, all the services he may attend, all the sermons he may practice, all the debts he may pay, and all of the ordinances he may observe, 
all the laws he may keep, all the benevolent acts he may perform, will not make his soul one whit safer. Now, that was, that was bad enough. But listen to the end of this quote. And all the sins he may commit from idolatry to murder will not make his soul in any more danger. The way a man lives has nothing whatever to do with the salvation of his soul. Can you believe that somebody who has even read James chapter 2, 14 through 16 could even make such a, such a statement? Such a statement that, 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 that is counter completely to what God says in this verse. That uh, uh, faith does indeed work. In the book of Romans, uh, chapter 1, uh, and verse 5, Paul, I like to call the, he uses what's called a faith sandwich. Uh, in that, he starts the book off by saying that faith, obedience of faith, and he ends the book by saying that, and everything in between, which is misconstrued and turned around and mixed up by so many people out there, forget that this book opened up with obedience of faith. Listen to chapter 1, verse 5. Through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations. That's how he starts this book stating that faith obeys. Now watch how he ends this book. Chapter 16, verse 26. But has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all the nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. I, I, just, I, I, I just want you to picture this idea of standing before God one day and, and, and he said, okay, here was my book. Uh, what did you do with it? And the person says, your book? Your book? Hey, listen, God, I, uh, I just simply believe that your son uh, is your son. Okay, open the gates. I want in. I'm afraid it's going to be a very sad day. Um, it, it, it's, it's going to be a difficult day. Jesus said in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 6, read this with me in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, uh, verse uh, 31, uh, tw uh, 23, excuse me, where he says in this passage concerning those who um, uh, had um, uh, believed, well, he starts in verse 21 by saying, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, that day that I just referenced, that day of judgment, where so many people are going to stand and say, Oh, I believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And then I went on and lived my own life. I did my own thing. I, I, I still believed. And, and you know something? Once in a while. I went to church. What a sad day. They say in verse 22, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. And by the way, who says Lord, Lord to God but those who are worshiping him? He says, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. These are people who are doing things in the name of Jesus. Religious acts. These are not people who just simply believe. They're actually doing something. They're doing the wrong thing. And on that day, notice what he says. And then, and then, a sad, sad verse. And then, I will say to the, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice wickedness. I believe the King James Version there says practices evil. So we need to get a grip on what James is talking about here in James chapter two, when he when he connects faith and works and puts them together as a unit for obedience to God in, no, in, in whatever he asks us to do.
So he says here, um, what use is it, verse 14? Uh, my brother from man says he has faith, but he has no works. Can that faith save him? That's a rhetorical question. It's never intended to be answered because the answer is automatic. No, that will not save him. No, that faith that, that, that just does nothing can't save him. He's going to illustrate it here in this passage. Notice he says, and if a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, ah, go in peace. Be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what they need. What use is that? And the answer is, yeah, of course, it's no good at all. Because faith, that is, that trusting, believing God for what he says and what he does, always ends in action. Doing what God says. Not just, not just, um, uh, proclaiming something, but doing something. God says to do something, and so we're supposed to do it. So he says in verse 17, even so faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. I don't know what, if God wanted to say that faith apart from works is dead, how, how clearer could he be than here? Recently, Recently, I was uh, having a Bible study, a group Bible study with some folks, and I was, I was called into this study, and uh, the subject came up about baptism. And uh, these were uh, Calvinists. They didn't even know they were Calvinists, but they were Calvinists. And uh, uh, this passage came up in the, in the study, and um, I, uh, uh, baptism came up, and they said, oh, no, 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 uh, baptism... Uh, baptism cannot be a work. Uh, it cannot have it be essential to salvation because it is a work. I said, okay, I, I hear you on that. I, I do, I do hear you. But I have a question with that, and, th and that is, would you turn to the Bible passage that tells me that baptism is a work? Oh, they said, th there's no doubt about it. Everybody believes. Our church teaches. I said, whoa, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. I, I don't mean to be rude or crude, but I really don't care what your church teaches. What I want to know is what does the Bible say? Now, if you can quote me a Bible passage, I tell them, that shows me that, that baptism is a work, then I'll believe you. Then, 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 then I will throw out baptism as essential to salvation. But, but me and my brethren and others, such as yourself, have read the Bible over and over and over and over again. And we can't find such a Bible passage. There is no Bible passage that tells us that baptism is a work, that that demarcation point between lost and saved, that moment is baptism for the remission of sins based upon a believing, confessing uh, heart and mouth uh, and repentance, that, that, that turning from the way I used to live to the way that God wants me, that being sorry that I ever lived that way, and I now commit myself to a life of righteousness with my God. <sighs> what more can we say? Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. No, no, there are no works of righteousness. I can't, I can't stand before God and say, hey, God, look what I did. As a matter of fact, I've got this long list of righteous deeds that I did, and now because I did those deeds, you owe me, God. You owe me salvation. So fork it over, God. Give it to me. No, it's not by deeds of righteousness. He alludes to baptism for the remission of sins when he says that we have washing and regeneration. What else could he possibly be referencing there but baptism for the remission of sins? Where he connects faith, works, they do something. Obedient faith always does something. And so he says here in our passage here, you believe, verse 19, he says, you believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. The passage we already read, Mark chapter 3, verse 11, that 
uh, the uh, spirits, the evil, unclean spirits cried out, you are the son of God. They're not saved. All of the demons uh, throughout all the Bible, whenever Jesus dealt with them, they all confess, we know who you are. Don't throw us out. Don't just, just put us in these swine. They knew exactly who he was. But do you believe a demon, an evil spirit is saved and going to be in heaven with us simply because they believe who Jesus is? And yet, and, and yet so many quote-unquote Christian people, preachers, preach the Bible passage that says, they claim, that all you have to do, believe in your heart and pray the sinner's prayer, and you get to go to heaven. <sighs> I don't have time to get with that today. We're going to deal with some other subjects here. But we're going to talk about faith that works. We're talking about faith that does something. A faith that, that says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and whatever you want me to do, God, I'm going to do it. To show you that I believe in you, that I trust you, that I want to obey you, I want to do whatever you tell me to do. And so he brings up the illustration of Abraham. Was not, he says, Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar? You see, God said, do something. Now, Abraham could have very easily said, says, no, wait a minute, hold it, God. Just, 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 just hold on just one minute. I do believe that you have the power to, to resurrect my son if he were to die. I, I, I believe that with, within my heart. I believe it with all of my heart. I've trusted you and believed you all of my life, so we don't need to go through this sacrificing of my son thing. Just, I believe. Would that have worked? Would, would, would God had known for certain that Abraham, that Abraham had the type of faith in God that no matter what God told him to do, he would do it? I tell you, no. I tell you, no, the reality of it is that if Abraham would have said, oh, no, God, let, you know, I know. You no, know, uh, Sarah will, will, will not let me do this, and, 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 and I believe you. No way would God say, okay, that's fine. In the same way that when he tells you and I to do something, when he says that I need to put aside anger and bitterness and resentment, when he tells me that I need to start living a righteous life, that when he starts telling me uh, through his word, that I need to begin to live a life of holiness and godliness, and I ignore that, can I, pop, can, I, can I possibly claim that I have faith in God? The Bible is quite clear. No, you can't. Faith, that ha true faith, obeys God. So he says here in verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which says, And Abraham believed God and was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. I believe in the Old Testament there's two different places. Uh, Isaiah and... I have to look it up. Um, it says that, that Abraham was a friend of God. He calls us his friends too, if we believe in Jesus. So here's his Bible that tells us that, that, that we need to have this kind of faith. He says, verse 24, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. The only time in the Bible that faith and alone is in the same context, in the same passage, and is preceded by not by faith alone. Now, interesting, the uh, English uh, 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 ESV, English Standard Version, in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, they really tried uh, to, to get this idea in there of faith alone. Listen to this quotation. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but faith only, but fa only faith working through love. You get that? And I tend to throw in that only. Well, I'm looking at my computer right here, and I'm and I and I've got the interlinear up here, and uh, the uh, uh, the word only 
is not in the original text. At least the New American Standard, when, which is the one, by the way, you need, to, you need to have under your arm when you go through the pearly gates. You know that, don't you? You do know that. At least when they, for the most part, when there is a word that's not in the text but kind of implied by the text, they at least italicize it. Um, and the English Standard Version, which is, by the way, a good version. For the most part, it's a good version. And yet right there, that just, I read, read that passage, and it just irritates the fire out of me. Why couldn't you just stick with the passage? So he says here, uh, verse uh, 25, And in the same way was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received her messengers and sent them out by another way. For just as a body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. You see, there's no such thing as a workless faith. No such thing. There's, there's, there's nowhere in the Bible where, where we have an individual who, who just says, yeah, I, I, I believe God and goes about, lives the life they've been living, nothing changes. There's nothing in their life that changes, and they wind up going to heaven. There's no one like that in the Bible. There's nowhere where we can sit and say that, that the transition in life didn't take place and therefore they get to go to heaven. No, we don't have that at all. Instead, what we have is, 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 is highlighted here in James chapter 2, that faith without works is dead. Faith by itself is useless. Anybody can say, yeah, I believe that Jesus is. Uh, is the Son of God, and from that very split second, he's going to go to heaven. Several years ago, in a Bible class I was teaching, it was a question and answer, and um, the subject came up about faith, and um, I, um, I, I asked the class, uh, because they were getting really confused. It was, it was a time where there's a lot of people in the class were unbelievers. We were bringing in people from drug and alcohol rehab places, and uh, it was um, uh, 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 really a, a very interesting class. Uh, we had every week anywhere between 30 and 50 people there who were not members of the Lord's Church who were struggling, and they didn't know what faith was. So I asked the question, what is faith? Of course, no one gave the answer. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's me believing in God. I said, well, where do we get faith? Where do we get faith? Well, they, they well, from your heart, they said. Or, or you inherited it. I said, no, 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 no. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. We know that passage. So uh, uh, this one girl back in the back who, sadly to say, could look at her and see, her and see that, 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 that drug rehab, this wasn't her first rodeo. Sadly, it just wasn't. And she said, well, all that you need is mustard seed faith. You can go to heaven. I, of course, knew what Bible passage she was referencing. I said, are you sure that's all that you need? She goes, oh, that's all you need, and you get to go to heaven. I says, nothing in your life needs to change. She goes, no, not a thing. I said, I said, you obviously are a drug addict. I believe her drug of uh, uh, choice was crack at the time. Um, and uh, I, I said, you can believe that you can believe in Jesus continue with your uh, uh, drug uh, uh, lifestyle, uh, lose your children, which she had, um, uh, continue to support the drug trade, which thousands of people a year are killed because of it, and, and, and you believe that you can continue in that, and all you have to have is just mustard seed faith that does nothing and go to heaven. She said yes. Gladly, it was at the end of the class, and it was time to close it down, so we had a prayer, and that, that bothered me for the longest time, that here was this little girl who had been uh, uh, lied to about what the scriptures teach, probably had never, ever, ever read this Bible passage. All that she heard was that she had to have mustard seed faith, and that's all, just, 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 just. Just, just barely believe in God and his son Jesus, and that's all I need. As a matter of fact, she used the term, 
will get into heaven by the skin of my teeth. You know, I had to inform her that your, your teeth don't have any skin and nobody sneaks in the back door of heaven. Nobody is going to wake up in heaven and wonder, how did I get here? Nobody is going to, to just barely make it into heaven. My Bible tells me, as well as yours does, that we are overwhelmingly conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are overwhelming victors in Christ Jesus because we believe him, we trust him, we follow him, we do what he says. We have obedient faith, faith that works. I hope this class has been a blessing to you. I'm really praying that it won't be too long before we'll get back to uh, uh, studying personally together. Uh, I miss my brothers and my sisters in Christ. I, I hope that you're enjoying this um, and, and uh, as much as I enjoy teaching the class, know that you are loved. Know that we pray for you. It's through our, sword, uh, our Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. God bless.